All right, so I promise you guys that we are going to start phasing out some of this Elon Musk coverage because honestly, at this point, I'm sick of it. I'm pretty sure a lot of my audience is sick of it. And um, it just seems like every single day there is some new scandal or chaotic unfolding of some terrible policy that he's putting out there and we just have to talk about it. So we're gonna start phasing it out. But uh, this is something that I felt was worthy of discussion, okay? Because there could be some pretty massive shakeups coming to Twitter, assuming that Elon Musk actually sticks by something that he said a couple of days ago. So uh, basically to start us off here with the last couple of days of what has been happening over on Twitter. So first, Elon Musk comes out and um, he basically decides to randomly put forward this new policy, which would basically ban the ability for users to share links to other social media platforms or to advertise themselves like I sometimes do. You know, if I have my, my Twitter profile and I say, okay, go subscribe to me on YouTube or go follow me on Instagram or whatever it may be, banning the ability for people to do that and and um, banning the people who, you know, still have that in their bios and were posting links to other platforms like Mastodon and a whole bunch of other ones, right? So completely fucking insane policy. I don't know where the fuck he got this idea, but, uh, you know, I think that it's it's a pretty, pretty easy interpretation in terms of understanding how terrible this policy would be. No other social media platforms do anything like this, but it basically was Elon Musk looking at, you know, tons of people on Twitter who are saying, okay, I'm moving over to Mastodon because this is just a massive, uh, you know, clusterfuck over here on Twitter, and so they're, they're you know, advertising their other uh, profiles on other platforms, and he didn't like that, so he decides to come in and ban it, and then basically almost immediately he does a complete 180 after getting some feedback from conservative pundits uh, who you know use that feature to advertise themselves on other platforms and he decides to drop it okay so again just kind of an insight in terms of the you know rampant chaos that is happening on a daily basis within the mind of somebody like elon musk who decided to unilaterally buy what he calls the public town square and now gets to just do whatever the fuck he wants uh you know on a whim with absolutely no oversight whatsoever so this was just one of the recent chaotic things that happened over on twitter puts this policy out it's terrible a bunch of people push back against it then he decides to drop it okay and keep in mind this was coming after a couple days ago when i covered him banning all of the different journalists for uh covering the elon jet story and his basically outright lie that there was some connection between the account that was tracking his uh flight data and uh the supposed or alleged attack that happened against him and his kid no connection whatsoever we've gotten official reporting about that and uh you know in the aftermath of that he decides to go ban all of these different journalists he's since then you know done a poll to allow them back on Twitter. Now they're back on, I guess. Some of them are still banned. The reason why I'm saying all of this is just to show you again, this is an absolute clusterfuck. He has no idea what he's doing with this platform. And um, so basically that entire situation led to this, as well as having significant pushback from not only, uh, you know, people who are have investments in Twitter, but also a lot of big, wealthy uh, Tesla investors as well, who are calling on him to focus more on his other companies like Tesla and SpaceX and the other ones, um, instead of putting so much energy into Twitter, okay? So basically, Tesla stock has been absolutely tanking over the last couple of months since he bought Twitter. A lot of investors are pissed about it. A lot of people are generally not happy with his uh, oversight of the Twitter platform. And so he decides to run this poll. Okay, so this was from, again, a couple of days ago back on the 18th and uh, he says should I step down as the head of Twitter okay so he's not saying he's going to sell the company he's just saying he might step down as a CEO and he says I will abide by the results of this poll okay so overwhelmingly close to 60% of respondents here and keep in mind this is a Twitter poll so there's absolutely no idea whether or not we could possibly trust this information it is not like a verified you know uh, actual poll of real people this is just a Twitter poll so who knows how many uh, bot accounts were flooding it on the no side or flooding it on the yes side. No way for us to know. Okay, this is not a reliable methodology to say the least, but it's one that he has decided he is going to abide by. Okay, so you have the results here. We're now two days removed from this poll going up. Elon Musk still has not resigned. Okay, so what's going on there? Are you actually going to abide by this poll? We saw other polls like again, the one on letting back the uh, journalists onto Twitter, the one about letting Trump back onto Twitter, he's abided by those polls. Will he actually abide by this one? Okay, maybe, you know, there's a couple different explanations for why he decided to put this poll up. Maybe he figured that he would have a lot more support and this would sort of like boost his ego because everybody would say, no, 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 Elon, we love you. We want you to stay on the platform. You know, don't know where he would get that delusion from, but it's Elon Musk that we're talking about. So that's one explanation. Another explanation is again, you have all of these people behind the scenes, some of his wealthy partners and, um, you know, uh, people who have invested in his various companies 
companies who are saying, listen, man, this isn't good, not only for Twitter's brand, it's also not good for Tesla and SpaceX, and it's going to have and has had negative financial consequences for all of Elon Musk's businesses across the board. And uh, so basically he's getting a little bit of pushback behind the scenes, and maybe some people are saying he should step down. So this could also be, you know, if it's not him trying to boost his ego, uh, it could also be an example of him getting a lot of those, uh, you know, getting a lot of that pushback behind the scenes and deciding, okay, maybe this will be a way for me to just save face and say, I'm just, oh, I'm abiding by the results of this poll. And so I'm going to step down to go focus on my other shit and keep my investment in Twitter while appointing some sort of a more uh, level-headed CEO or whatever the case may be. So I think that's a much more plausible explanation. Another piece of evidence here that we got a couple of days ago that sort of feeds into that same narrative. So here, here from uh, Newsweek, they say photo of Elon Musk and Jared Kushner at the World Cup draws criticism and speculation. And so they were also positioned, uh, you know, surrounded by presumably Qatari officials. I don't know, maybe there were some Saudi officials in there as well. Uh, Saudi Arabia has massive investments within the Twitter platform. This could have been an example where instead of Elon Musk, you know, big sports fan, I bet, uh, you know, instead of him going over there just to watch the World Cup and sort of flaunt himself, could have been him going over there to try to ask people to financially prop up Twitter as it has been been suffering. And one of the reasons why Twitter is uh, financially suffering so much is because of the way that he structured the deal to buy it in the first place and basically created a situation where that just their debt payments alone on an annual basis are greater than the revenue that they're bringing in or the profits that they're bringing in, which Twitter is typically not even a profitable company at all. But so they basically can't even keep up with the debt payments. So this could have been an example of, uh, you know, Elon Musk, his advertisers are continuing to flee, uh, flee amid all of this chaos. It could have been an example of him going to Qatari officials or Saudi officials or Jared Kushner or whoever else knows uh, in order to try to get some sort of a financial backing in order to prop himself up as the continued CEO and to uh, you know prop up the company as it is spiraling towards bankruptcy, which is something that Elon Musk himself has admitted is a uh, real possibility in the near future. But um, clearly, I think the fact that he did this poll after he went and had these conversations with some of these Qatari officials and Jared Kushner, maybe they were saying to him again behind the scenes that like, okay, maybe we'll help Twitter out financially if you step down as a CEO and appoint somebody who's more, you know, level-headed or whatever will do more about, you know, what they're uh, trying to get the platform to do. So I think that that's actually a very plausible explanation. Now, another thing, that Elon Musk did over the uh, last couple of days, right? So we haven't had any official follow-up on that Twitter poll and whether or not he's actually going to abide by it, which he said that he would. And um, we do have some follow-up on some other angles in order to interpret the data that was coming from this poll, okay? So uh, this is something where I'm gonna have to pat myself on the back just a little bit and uh, give myself a little bit of credit here because I called this happening mere hours before Elon Musk went and started entertaining this narrative, okay? So yesterday, I tweeted this out. I said, imagine that the Elon stepping down poll that we just looked at was just a data collection to ban everyone that voted yes. So obviously we're talking about Elon Musk. You know, this was a joke, but it's also something that like could plausibly happen in the back of my mind, right? So I tweeted that out and literally hours later, we have this thread. Okay, so we have Tim do Kim.com over here. Okay, I got Tim Pool in my brain for some reason, but Kim.com says, hey, Elon Musk, it's unwise to run a poll like this when you are now deep state enemy number one, I don't think the deep state gives a single solitary shit about Elon Musk, to be honest, but they say they have the biggest bot army on Twitter. I think, honestly, Elon Musk probably has the bit, biggest uh, bot following of any account on Twitter if you go look at his replies, but he says they have 100K analysts with 30 to 40 accounts all voting against you. Where's your evidence for that? I, I don't fucking know. I mean, there's definitely some bots on Twitter, but Elon is the one who has pointed out those bot problems and also decided to abide by the uh, parameters of this Twitter poll. So not like he couldn't have accounted for that going into this, but he continues saying, let's clean up and then run this poll again. The majority has faith in you. Okay, so he's assuming that out of these, what, 17 and a half million votes that like a couple million of them were just the deep state bot army trying to uh, displace Elon Musk. Okay, seems a little bit far-fetched there, although, you know, I'm not one to uh, give any credibility at face value to the U.S. government. They definitely are engaged in, uh, you know, attempt at uh, censorship on Twitter, and uh, they definitely do have bot accounts, but seems like it's a little bit of a stretch there. But he says, I'm hoping that Elon did this poll as a honeypot. Okay, so going back to my prediction here, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that Elon Musk did this poll as a honeypot to catch all the deep state bots. The data set for this poll will contain most of them, some good data mining, and he could kill them all in one go. And he replies to this, interesting. 
And then he says, okay, so not only is he sort of accepting the narrative that like this was a organized deep state bot campaign to tank him on Twitter, which is, you know, again, you're the one who put the poll out there. You're the one who said you were going to abide by the results. And, uh, you know, I think overwhelmingly, if you were going to poll the American people, their view of Elon Musk generally is not very positive. So you chose to do this, this poll, you chose the parameters of it. And um, instead of just sitting with that, instead of actually accepting the results, he's choosing to feed this narrative that it was some sort of a deep state conspiracy against him. Okay. So he says, interesting there. Then we have another follow-up here where it gets somehow even worse. Uh, here from Unfiltered Boss, he says, blue subscribers should be the only ones that can vote in policy-related polls. We actually have skin in the game. Okay, and he replies, good point. Twitter will make that change. So again, just taking whatever some random deranged conservative account tweets at him and saying, okay, yeah, let's do that policy now after the last policy failed within literally 24 hours. But whatever the, the chaos of his management style aside, okay, what is he actually saying here? He's saying, good point. Twitter will make that change to the idea that what? Only people who pay for a Twitter subscription and pay for that verification badge, that check mark, that they are going to be able to get to vote in polls. How do you think that might, I don't know, skew the results of those polls? Might it skew it in the direction of people who are willing to give Elon Musk $8 or however much the uh, verification badge is nowadays, $8 a month to his company? I mean, you think that might skew it a little bit in the other direction towards yourself and purely benefit you? I mean, come on, what are we really talking about here? So completely insane policy idea. And really what he's talking about there at the end of the day, I mean, only took him a couple months here but Elon Musk is trying to set up an apartheid, uh, you know, within the Twitter, Twitter sphere. And obviously, you know, himself coming from that family background of owning an uh, apartheid uh, emerald mine in South Africa, you know, not something that's too unexpected. But here we have Elon Musk just a couple of months into his ownership of Twitter, all of the chaos that has surrounded this, all of the failed policies that he has been put uh, putting forward. Then he runs a poll asking people if he should step down. Decisively, they say, yes, you should step down from this position. He's probably getting pushed back behind the scenes on, you know, uh, the same issue. And, and people behind the scenes, his wealthy friends and benefactors who are trying to push him to step down as well to focus on his other companies. And um, you have Elon Musk turning around and basically deciding to try to set up some sort of a, a financial or class-based apartheid system on Twitter where only people who pay a poll tax to Elon Musk directly uh, actually get to have a voice in some of these policy decisions, which is honestly just going to result in uh, you know more hilarity of some of these policies flopping straight on their face. Uh, a lot of the things that he has been proposing have just been like so easily, uh, you know, so easy to ana analyze how ridiculous and, and terrible they would be if they were actually implemented. So he's been walking everything back. He's been changing his mind every single day. Will he actually step down? I guess that's a big question here. I think largely it's not going to depend on the poll results or whatever that we just saw. It is largely going to depend on, you know, how far the Tesla stock continues to tank, how much pressure he's getting behind the scenes from his other companies and the uh, wealthy uh, investors in those ventures that he is a part of. So I think that there's a lot going on here, but hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, in the near future, we could see the end of Elon Musk as the owner of Twitter and, uh, you know, maybe Maybe then we could actually start progress in the right direction towards, you know, limiting the government involvement and censorship and actually protecting free speech. Because believe it or not, a guy like Elon Musk, the wealthiest man on the planet, or I guess not anymore, but one of the wealthiest men on the planet, uh, does not give a single solitary shit about your free speech rights. He does not give a single solitary shit about uh, anything that could possibly uh, benefit average working class people. He cares about his bottom line. He cares about his uh, position within, you know, his status uh, socioeconomically and politically. And so that's what he's going to focus on. And, you know, this next couple of weeks as he decides whether or not to leave are definitely going to be interesting, to say the least. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying things.